Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. Construction is underway for MTSU's new $147 million science building, scheduled for completion by spring semester of 2015. With Governor Haslam and other state officials on hand, MTSU broke ground on the long-awaited science building with a special ceremony in May. One, two, three. This is both an exciting and a historic day for all of us at MTSU and in this community and in the state. Today's ceremony for this $147 million project for our university is an appropriate capstone to our year-long celebration representing 100 years of offering services to the citizens of this great state. MTSU President Sidney A. McPhee and a large gathering of state officials, university administrators, faculty and students gathered outside the site where construction will begin immediately on a much needed new science building. Among the dignitaries, Governor Bill Haslam, who included almost $127 million for construction in his 2012-13 budget. But the, to be honest with you, the, the really important reason that this day is finally happening is this. It's the right thing for the entire state of Tennessee. Governor Haslam said investing millions of dollars in a new science building at MTSU is the right thing for the state because Tennessee must drastically increase the number of citizens who have a degree, now just 21 percent for those older than 25. If you look at the growth of Middle Tennessee and its impact on all of Tennessee, it is incredibly strategic the role that MTSU not only needs to play but has to play if we're going to be a great state. That includes the area called the STEM discipline, science, technology, engineering, and math, where the governor says the state is behind, due in part because MTSU has existed so long with facilities like this one, Weiser Patton Science Hall, built in 1932 and training students for years with outdated labs and equipment. The groundbreaking ceremony also included remarks from Board of Regents Chancellor John Morgan who noted that MTSU's new science building represents one of the most, if not the most, significant investment by Tennessee in science education. This science building project is in perfect alignment with the TBR's mission to educate more Tennesseans in order to provide the state and our workforce what it needs for sound economic development. Morgan told those gathering that it's projected that the new facility will increase the number of degrees in biology, chemistry, and other science-related fields by 25 percent, and those graduates will help Tennessee fill emerging high-tech jobs. And American students score 23rd in math and 31st in science when compared to 65 other industrialized countries. We must, must turn back this tide in America, which led the technological revolution must not lag behind. Senator Ketrin says the new facility is about investing in students and the nation's future. He thanked other members of the General Assembly for making the new investment not only a priority, but a reality. Senator McNally, uh, uh, Chairman Sargent's counterpart, Budget and Finance Ways and Means, we thank you so much for the two of you because you helped orchestrate that and I know you were getting pressure from UT. Go Vols, but now I'm here to say, go Blue, thank you, this is a great day in the life of MTSU. The university hopes to have the new building ready for classes by spring 2015. MTSU's year-long centennial celebration concluded with the spring 2012 commencement and the awarding of the 100,000th undergraduate degree during graduation ceremonies on May 5th. The university presented a record 2,535 degrees including 11 doctorates and more than 500 master's degrees. I can't think of a more fitting way to conclude than with this historical milestone. We started as an undergraduate institution and it is most fitting today's graduation ceremony mark the awarding of our 100,000th undergraduate degree.
Students and their families search for many ways to pay for college, from scholarships and loans to grants and work study. One MTSU student found a rather unique way to fund not only her education, but her siblings' educations as well. She's a testament to the fact that, yes, someone does win those corporate giveaway offers on food and beverage products, and your college investment does go farther at MTSU. I started here last fall, so I've been here now a full year, and I love it. Nikki Boone started her education at MTSU in 2011 as a junior in the music business program. I love the, the big campus. I was at two schools that had um, a pretty small campus. But her road to MTSU was by no means a normal one. Dr. Pepper has really changed my life. My favorite pop has always been Dr. Pepper, and anybody will tell you that. If it sounds like a commercial, it is. But Nikki Boone isn't complaining. She won $123,000 in a tuition throw contest after noticing the giveaway on a 12-pack of her favorite soda. My boyfriend is actually already here at MTSU, and I was living up in Minnesota, and he was like, you know, just try, just, just put in a video. Nikki figured it would be worth it, even if she won a small scholarship. That was, I actually got a phone call two days after I sent in the video, which was crazy. I wasn't expecting to hear back that quickly. And they said, you're one of the five finalists. A finalist for the SEC championship game, Dr. Pepper tuition throw. Two contestants have 30 seconds to throw, simultaneously throw 10 balls from the five yard line. Nikki had two months to practice up for the big contest. They even gave her the dimensions of the soda can she'd be throwing to. Yes, I worked at uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, downtown Minneapolis, and Ray Edwards uh, from the Vikings came in. And he, you know, he's not even a quarterback, but I was like, an NFL player is going to give me better advice than, you know, some schmuck on the side of the road. So he said, uh, how can, can you throw football very well? And I said, no, I mean, not really. I'm, I, th I throw the football around with my friends. And he said, try throwing it like a basketball sideways and, and do the chest pass. And he said, that'll give you a lot more control. Time now for the Dr. Pepper tuition throw. And let's welcome our contestants, Matt Fairfield from Crestwood, Kentucky, and Nikki Boone from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Even after being advised to throw chest passes, Nikki practiced the regular way, 100 throws a day, five days a week, until a friend advised her to check into the rules. So I emailed the Dr. Pepper people and I was like, what are the exact rules? Can you throw it with two hands? And they said, yeah, just as long as it goes from your hands to like throw it to the, to the Dr. Pepper can. So I tried it and that was the first time I ever got 10 for 10. And so I was like, okay, I gotta stick with it. No turning back. But that was just a day before she left for the competition. Honestly, I was like, okay, I, that's the Lord telling me. That's what you're supposed to do. You're doing sideways and you just gotta trust it and go. The day before, they gave five contestants a preliminary round with a chance to warm up, with only the top two getting to throw at halftime of the game. The day of the game, you know, everything's timed out. Everything is like so strict. Um, they were just like, we're down in the field, and they said my name, and I was like waving to the crowd, just having a great time. And all of a sudden, they're like, okay, go. And I turn around, and I'm like, it just was out of nowhere. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is happening right now. You were doing well, you were ahead, and then you started, you missed a couple. I did, yeah, I missed a couple. The, what happened was my strategy was not to look to the other side to see how my competitor was doing, uh, just because that was going to lose my focus. So at one point I heard one of the footballs miss from his side. I heard it miss, and I saw it roll down right in front of my feet. And I looked over, and as soon as I looked over, I was like, oh, no, I just ruined my strategy. And it kind of, you know, caught me off guard. It kind of... Uh, Mess with my head for a minute. The thing that's funny is the day before at the preliminary, he got 10 for 10. He was a baseball pitcher for 16 years, and he did not miss. As a music major, Nikki says she wasn't nervous to be in front of such a big crowd. That's when I was thriving because I love to be in a setting like that where I think that made him nervous. I think I made the last two in a row again at the end. There you have it. Congratulations, Nikki Boone. Congratulations, Nikki. On behalf of Dr. Pepper and all of our Dr. Pepper followers, I'm pleased to present you with this check for $123,000 to go towards your tuition. Congratulations. 
With the first prize winnings, Nikki says she thought about going to a private college in Nashville. My boyfriend was here at MTSU in the REM program, and he was telling me all this really awesome stuff about things that they were doing and um, people they were bringing in to speak. And I was like, MTSU, you know, there's I don't I don't see like a Belmont being as much more expensive as it is this huge gap, you know. And I started checking out stuff, and it the more and more I checked out things in the music program at MTSU, the more and more it sparked my interest. When she realized how much she could save going to MTSU and still help her brother and sister with tuition and loans, her mind was made up. Once, I, once that kind of struck my mind that I was going to be able to help my siblings, it was kind of, you know, like this, there's, there's no reason to not go to a school that has just as good of a music program and is going to be able to help me help my family. After a full year at MTSU, she's convinced <laughs> she made the right choice. And so all the students and just the whole atmosphere of MTSU has been really fun for me to get to experience. Faculty here in the music business program has been awesome. I've had so many opportunities from meeting these, these music professors who have done so much in the industry that now can help me out with my career. I, I do country music, I sing. I know typical, cynical, even sing. Um, and they've you know, taken a real interest in helping me out and um, giving me a lot of advice and it's been really awesome. When I graduate, I hope to become an artist singing country pop music. Nikki says she decided to major in music business so she could know all aspects of the profession, from artist management to accounting and copyright law. She hopes to graduate next December. Um, actually, MTSU has been really awesome about all the different credits that I've brought from two different schools. So it's been a lot. It's, it's helped a lot. So has a generous check for $123,000. We have a couple of student awards to tell you about. Sophomore Jordan Dotson has been named a Goldwater Scholar. Fewer than 300 college students nationwide received the honor, which includes a two-year, $15,000 Goldwater Scholarship. Dotson is a double major in professional chemistry and mathematics and has a 3.97 GPA. And for the first time in the university's history, an MTSU student has won a National College Television Award from the Academy of Arts and Science Foundation. Senior Erica Doyle won second place for Best Magazine Style Show for a segment of her MT10 TV show, Corey TV, on ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Doyle received the honor at the 33rd Annual College Television Awards Gala in Hollywood. This spring, the MTSU Film Committee sponsored the 12th Annual Student Film Festival. It's a popular favorite of students who gather at the Keithley University Center to get a glimpse at some amazing student productions. After a week of competition, the audience favorite was a film titled Conscience Makes Cowards, based upon Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1, by Ryan Renborg. Mr. Renborg has given us the rights to show his audience favorite right here on Out of the Blue. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to, to bring suffer. the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, take arms against the sea of troubles. And by opposing, end them to die to sleep no more and by asleep to say we we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks the flesh is heir to it is a consummation devoutly to be wished to die to sleep to sleep a chance to dream Hey, there's the rub, for in the sleep of death, what dreams may come? We have shuffled off this mortal coil. Must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the, the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely. The pangs of despised love. The laws delay, the insolence of office and spurns. The patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. 
Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? That's a dread. Something after death. That undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. Puzzles the will. Makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. And thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. All men have gray beards that their and faces thus, are wrinkled and a resolution is sickly or with pale cast. <laughs> Members of the film committee and the student programming council judged the entries. The top three winners were How to Rob a Bank by Zach Eagles, The Eyes That Watch Your Home by David Peralt, and Progeny by Michelle Israel. Congratulations, and we'll see you at next year's 13th annual MTSU Student Film Festival. And the award for Best Engineering, Manufacturing, and Industrial Technology video goes to the Academy of Aviation and Transportation. <laughs> and MTSU partnered with Metro Nashville Public Schools on another video awards competition, the Academies of Nashville Video Award Show at Belcourt Theater in Hillsborough Village. The high school video competition was created to tell the stories of Metro Nashville's academies. MTSU students from the Electronic Media Communication Department directed, produced, and delivered the inaugural award show with the university's mobile production lab. Electronic Media Department Chair Billy Pittard presented the top award for Best in Show to the Academy of International Business Communications at Hillsboro High. It's, I mean, congratulations to all of y'all for the super work that you've already done. I think you're all winners. Um, and by the way, if you love doing these kind of videos, we've got a program for you at MTSU, so please come and see me. Blue Raider students also mentored several teams in the competition. The hour-long show aired on Nashville's NECAT Channel 10. We'll be right back. The young kids is out here want to volunteer. They're Saturday, and they're going to school every day and everything. They could be doing something else, studying or whatever, but they're out here on a Saturday morning coming out to help. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. different here. Now for our cover story. Yvonne Summers has a new home thanks to some giving MTSU volunteers. MTSU sponsored a home through Habitat for Humanity. Students, faculty, and staff started work on the home back in February. 
and on April 26th, many of the volunteers gathered for the dedication ceremony. Grad student Kelly Ford has followed the construction from the outset. To own a house, but with no, you know, trying to get my down payment, your finance and stuff like that, it was kind of hard for me, you know, being a single parent and, you know, trying to raise two kids and stuff. And I lived in Illinois. It was, it was hard. And then I volunteered to help on a, a friend's house at, from Habitat. And she told me to put in an application and stuff. And I did. And, and I got chosen. Habitat for Humanity is a program we work with low-income families who make 30 to 50 percent of the median income of the area. So these are families that are working and are making money but they just don't make enough to qualify for a conventional mortgage. So we're opening up the opportunity to own a home to families that otherwise wouldn't be eligible to. And in doing that we actually do sell them the home. Habitat is not a giveaway program. To first of all expose the college students to the Habitat experience and give them that opportunity to really work hands-on and have a really tangible way of participating in the community and community service. All these ladies come out and volunteer their time and stuff to, I mean, act, they actually work it. I mean, they lift in the bricks and concrete and throwing it up there, the wheelbarrow, like, wow. And, and I'm thankful for them. That, you know, the young kids is out here want to volunteer. Yeah. They're Saturday, and they go going to school every day and everything. They could be doing something else, studying or whatever, but they're out here on a Saturday morning coming out to help volunteer their time. But they could have been sleeping in, and I'm thankful for that. 2008 on State Street, we did um, the second one in 2010 on Reed Avenue, and then this one in 2012, and this one will be on East Severe. To tell our volunteers, with us, you can think globally, but you can serve locally. And uh, not very many organizations, you can say that. But, you know, I hope for them that they learn a new skill. I hope that they learn something about themselves. I can remember on February 15th, I came and we helped put up the framing for the outside of the house. And it's amazing to see how in a few short months, we can go from putting up the framing on a house to dedicating a home mm -hmm. to this lady here. See the dirt and all that is here now? That was here back in February when we started. And now you have a home. A home to be able to place pictures on the wall for all the memories to come. Home for Christmas, Easter, family occasions, birthdays, all those wonderful things. And students, what I want you to remember is, is that I know you hung the vinyl siding, and I know you put the insulation up, you helped with the roof. I know those are all the things that you did, uh, but what you need to take away is, is that this is a home. You gave her a home. There must be some love on the inside. The love is what bind the brick. That's right. Love is what bind the shingle. She don't, and I had learned from my experience, ask somebody, and get the right answer and not listen to everybody else. And, and if it wasn't for that, I don't know where I was going to be. Summer's Home is the third built by MTSU and Habitat for Humanity in Rutherford County. According to the Census Bureau, the home ownership rate has declined to just over 65% from a peak in 2004 of just over 69%. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best.
This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university. This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best. I'm all in. I call. I don't know how you guys do it at your place, but MT is tobacco free. Two more invitations to the postseason have arrived for MTSU sports, golf and tennis. The Blue Raider men's golf team headed to the NCAA regionals for the fifth straight year, earning an at-large bid in the 14-team regional at Norman, Oklahoma. It's the sixth NCAA berth in MTSU golf program history, all coming since 2000, including a number 15 national ranking in 2008. This year's team is led by senior Hunter Green, who ranked 65th nationally in scoring average and appeared in his third straight NCAA regional. And the men's tennis team earned an invitation to the 64 team field for the 2012 NCAA Men's Tennis Championships. Number 46 MTSU was paired with number 22 Michigan in the opening round. It was the 11th NCAA championship berth for MT Tennis and the third in the past four years. The tennis team finished the regular season with a record of 19-7 and, and won the Sun Belt Championship for a second straight year. Well, that's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. Until next time, True Blue. Join us in celebrating 100 years of MTSU history. Check out the Centennial Timeline at mtsu.edu slash centennial.